everyone, this is Matt with Motion VFX, and we recently updated our mMessage 2 pack for DaVinci Resolve. The workflow is a little bit different, but overall it works a lot better. We've made some small improvements, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Resolve and show you the new workflow. All right, so once you've updated mMessage 2 in the mInstaller application, you can find it under Effects, Titles, Motion VFX, mMessage 2 right here. And from here, you can see we've got nine overlays, and then coming down here to effects, we've also got 38 chats, seven icons, nine incoming calls, seven messages, 10 notifications, 17 reactions, and five social media posts. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna come up here to toolbox and we'll just search for message. So I'm just gonna scrub through here and pick a message that we want to display next to the phone here. Now, of course, you can hover with your mouse right over here and see how they will look with your footage. Let's just pick number four here. Now, of course, I could drag this straight on to the clip like this, but if I do this, then the in and out animations are basically stuck to wherever this clip exists in time. So for the most amount of control over my in and out animations, I can also just use an adjustment clip here, which you can also find under effects at the very top adjustment clip is right here. I'm just gonna drag and drop one of these right over the footage that I wanna use. And I'm just gonna play through this and kind of visualize the timing and plan out where I want this chat bubble to appear on screen. So I think about this long is probably good enough. So now I'm gonna drag that preset number four right onto my adjustment clip like this. And at the moment, it's just directly in the middle of the screen, which is fine. We don't have to track these, but they're kind of designed to be tracked. And so the way we're gonna do that is over here in the inspector, I'm just gonna click on this fusion icon, which will open up my clip here in fusion. And you can see I've got media in, we've got our preset here, and then we have media out. So what I wanna do is add a tracker node after my media in right here. So I'm gonna select media in and hit shift spacebar and type in tracker. And that will add a tracker node right here after my media in. And I'm just gonna click and drag this up to the left viewer over here. If you only have one viewer like this, then you can come up here to the top right corner and click on these two rectangles. This will give you two different viewers to look at your track and then your final composite over here on the right side. So with my tracker selected, I'm just gonna grab this little tiny square. This will let me move the entire tracker around with this nice zoomed in window. And I'm really just looking for something with plenty of contrast to give the tracker something to grab onto. And if I kind of zoom in here, I can resize my tracker window as well as my search region. And as you can see, I'm currently on frame 63. So if I were to hit track forward right here, it will actually go all the way to the beginning, disregarding where I've placed this tracker on this frame. So instead I can click on this track forward from current time button and it's gonna track forward like this. And now I can go back to frame 63 and click track reverse from current time. Okay, so that looks like a pretty solid track. So now what I can do is click on my chat preset here and I'm gonna come up here to M message position and just right click, come down here to connect to Tracker one, tracker path position. We're gonna select this. And right now this is just gonna put that whole entire graphic right over our tracker point. So it's kind of covering up the phone. So I can also come down here to content controls and just move this over to the side, maybe even size it down a little bit. Okay, so now we can go through here and just kind of customize our text. And you can see as I type here, this message bubble increases depending on the length of the text, which is kind of cool. So we can resize this up a little bit. Let's make it a little bit more bold. And the info controls is where we can adjust the time or really we can put whatever we want up at the top. If you don't want anything, you can simply just delete it. I'm gonna leave it in for now. And then under the drop zone controls, we can add a avatar, which is gonna go right here. I'm just gonna browse for a photo here and I can use the inner position. Let's actually zoom in here so we can see this a bit better. So I can use the avatar inner position to reposition this. Same with the scale. We can also make the entire avatar a little bit bigger, move it over a little. And we also have a drop zone control for the main message with its corresponding position and scale controls. And let's hop back over here to the edit page and check our effect here. Looks good, looks like it's nice and sticky to this phone here. Now keep in mind, you can always shorten your adjustment clip if you want to adjust the timing. And what's neat about this is you don't have to retrack anything. You would if you wanted to extend the length, but in general, I think it's a good idea to kind of work with a little bit larger of an adjustment clip. That way you can just go ahead and track probably too much of the frame that you think you might need, and then you can go ahead and trim it back. 
without losing any of the tracking data. So the reason I want to shorten this is because I actually want to add a second message. Let's add like a reply. So kind of as this is animating upward, we can add a second message at the end of the clip. So I'm going to go ahead and add another adjustment clip right as this first message starts to disappear. And let's just go ahead and use preset number three, which is very similar to the other one we used without the drop zone. So I'm just going to drop this right onto this adjustment clip. So we used a semi bold font. It was a little bit larger and we can go ahead and fill in our text. And now let's go ahead and add a avatar for her. And before I do any positioning, why don't we just go ahead and hop into the fusion page and do the same process as before. We're going to add a tracker after our media in, throw it over here in the left viewer and let's grab our tracker and let's just track that same location. It seemed to work fine for the first one. So just resize both of my tracker and my region and hit track forward from current frame and track in reverse from current frame. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up here again to in message position and just right click, connect to tracker one, tracker path position. And I'm just gonna find a good frame where they're kind of both overlapping and I'm gonna use the content offset controls here just to position the second message coming in a little bit lower like that. All right, and so let's see it on the edit page here. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually turn off the out animation here. So it's just gonna be a harsh cutoff going into the next shot. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here and let's take a look at a couple of these social media posts right here. Let's try number two. So once again, I'm gonna use an adjustment clip. Let's just drag one of these right over this next clip in our timeline here. And maybe we'll shorten this to about three seconds. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drop on preset number two onto the adjustment clip. And I will go down to the drop zone controls and let's add a quick little avatar here. And I'll just reposition the avatar inner position, maybe scale it up as well. And I'll just go ahead and add a picture and I'll just increase the inner scale. And then I'll come down here to text controls and let's just write a different message here. And you can see this particular preset has some button controls here. So you can turn off each of these buttons if you'd like. You can also change their colors. I'll just leave these black for now. And you can customize the upper text too. So we can say like 80 comments. All right, so same process as before. I'm gonna come up here, click on the fusion icon and I'm gonna run through this a little bit quicker this time. So I'm gonna add my tracker node and let's track maybe the side of the phone here where this button is that looks like a pretty good high contrast area. Gonna go ahead and track forward from current position and then go to the same frame, track backwards. And then I'm just gonna come up here to message position once again and connect this to the tracker. Okay, let's go back over here to the edit page. And once again, I can use the content controls just to position this away from the phone there. Nice, so now we can see that post is nice and stuck to that phone there. Why don't we go ahead and use an overlay as well? So these can be applied directly onto the timeline. You don't need to drag these onto an adjustment clip or any footage or anything like that because they just simply create graphics. So here you can see we've got these thumbs up floating across the screen. Okay, so let's take a look at these incoming calls up here. We've got nine total presets and these all have a drop zone area which you can make a picture or a video. So like for example, we've got number nine here which kind of has this like video chat inspired overlay. So I've also got these additional angles. So this is the same character. It's just like a different angle. We can use this to kind of mimic like a close up. And then I've got another character that we can bring in right here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the end of this clip and let's just go ahead and make sure all three of these are the same duration. So I'll just grab the ends and clip them down like this. And if I select them all and right click and choose new fusion clip, now whenever I drag on preset number nine onto the fusion clip, you can see that it doesn't right away bring them into those drop zones, but under the drop zone controls, we can simply just select video for both of these. And there you go. Now we've got both of those sources coming in. Now at the moment, we've got our main character here in full screen and we, maybe we want to flip these. So we can right click the clip, go into open timeline. And if I hold control shift or command shift, I can click and drag this top track down to the second and that's just going to replace these two. So now I'll double click demo back here to get to my main timeline. And here you can see we have swapped those two sources. 
And of course, this effect could be tracked onto the footage as well. That's actually why we needed to bundle all three of these clips together into the fusion clip so that we could use the bottom layer to track the overall effect on top of. And that's the updated workflow for this entire pack. Hope you've enjoyed and that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.